Okay, so this will be my step-by-step -step walkthrough. Just a little tip pointer thing on how to do a strong point obstacle stop armor. Uh, here, got a little triple strand anti tank obstacle. Right here, I call it triple strand. You know, three sets, barbed wire, three anti tank traps. You know, the check hedgehogs there. Uh, got these right in front of the first one. So, as you can see, layers, layers, layers. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that in a second. You know. Uh, let's put these guys so, over here. Wir so that way can walk walk in through. This is really just more on how I like to do it. Um, and and for buddy who asked me on how I do it and how I want it done. But I mean, if you find this video on YouTube somewhere, um, you know, put this in your toolbox if you want to do it like this, or just completely ignore me. I don't really care. Um, love this game. Love how kind of realistic. Esque, you know, nothing's ever totally realistic in video games. Uh, never a hundred percent authentic, but here, as you can see, I have the Constantiner or the barbed wire uh, in support with the anti-tank trap. So, reason is, and, and this is, you're not gonna do this in an area like this. You're gonna find yourself a nice little choke point. Which is why I set up right here between the trees, but on the road. But, I mean, if your guys got a steward or a, a Panzer IV or a Panther or something, he's just, he's going to see this, see that there's an open field, and just go around this. So, I like using this on Normandy at the gates. Um, but, yeah, definitely choke points. And one of the things you got to do when you set something like this up is you got to assess you're not there to totally stop them. Okay? You're there to delay for as much as you can, cause as much havoc, make their lives a living hell trying to get through this. You know? Which is why I set up Constantino wire or the barbed wire. Oh, wait, that actually is barbed wire. What do you know? Uh, but yeah, that's why you set this up in front of the check hedgehog because otherwise you know they'd just be able to go through and just, you know, destroy it like that but uh, definitely want to build into the terrain and a uh, little thing if you don't know about the barbed wire yes it does kill you so they know that and it slows you the fuck down as you just saw now as we know any obstacle is only as good as long as you have overwatch on it because you can have all this shit right here you have Rosie O'Donnell's fucking vagina right here just sitting here in open air waiting for anyone to come penetrate and they're gonna take as long as they want not be rushed you wanna put some pressure on them so another thing I like to do this right here put yourself an anti-tank gun you know don't want to do it straight on um, like I did you want to kind of have it off center um, right over there actually would have been a pretty good spot because as you can see yeah because you can still see the wire you can still see the, the obstacle and you have a 45 degree angle on the obstacle in order to provide fire support on that obstacle right but me you know a little strong point like this pack cannon just in case they do send the armor up you know uh <laughs> delay them for as long as you can cuz hey you know what best part you hit this thing with a tank and that tank blows up guess what that tank just became a part of your obstacle so that's more stuff they have to work through. Eventually, what they're going to do is they're just going to say, fuck it, and try a different approach. All right? Again, this is incorporating layers to the defense. Layers. Right? And if you notice, I haven't just gone and set up the fucking gun all willy-nilly with nothing to help. You know, I set up some sandbags. Right? Set up some sandbags. 
which incorporates into my third layer, the anti-aircraft gun, because if they do get pissed off enough, they will send aircraft your way. And that's where this fucker comes into handy. Shot a few down with it. Let me see if I can get one of these variety balloons. Went down like the Hindenburg. Won't always be that easy, but hey, as you can see, it works. And uh, in a pinch, you can also aim this thing down, you know, and have an extra layer of uh, as I uh, go and totally blow away my fucking sandbag walls. It almost like the shittiest blue on blue incident ever in history. But uh, yeah, and then of course, you know, you have your rally point, you have your ammo. All of it. This is kind of like your third and final layer. If they, if they start pounding you this hard and you can't get any of this set up, don't even bother. Um, this is definitely like the the flat cannon is like always the last thing I think you want to do. But uh, hey, you know what? Some some guys maybe they want to set up the AA gun first, get that uh protection from the air. Or, yeah, from the enemy air, anyway. But, uh, me, I always start with the wire where I can. And always make sure it's at a choke point. This is kind of shitty. You know, you don't want to have open fields, but this is just an example. On what you can do. Right. So, there's that. Another thing, you know, that you can do. Alright, and this is something that, you know, if you're in the know, uh, you already know about this. Uh, one of the things that you can do is, as an engineer, you shape the battlefield, you create the battlefield, you bend it to your will, and you send the enemy where you want them to go down. Right. So, let's say you see something like this, you know... The enemy's coming up on it. They're like, you know what? Fuck that. I want to go the opposite way. And then they come down here to this little training road that I'm going to run down to. Right. And that's where you would kind of, if you wanted to, you could set up your AT gun in a different spot. doesn't always have to provide overwatch. But, uh, let's say, you know, pretend like all that's not there. Not going to be able to get into it, so. Yeah. yeah sword does not cut the barbed wire. Anyway, let's just pretend none of this was here, right? You would intentionally leave all of this open because you're trying to direct them here, right? And what you do with this road? Landmine. That's right. Anti-tank, anti-personnel, which is something when you get the bouncing Betty as well uh, that I'm also going to try and incorporate when I get it is inside the wire obstacle as well. Right? Because let's say the enemy sends up some of its sappers to try and breach your obstacle up here. You know, um... Again, you're not trying to just totally stop them, but you're trying to delay them for as long as you can. You put a few anti-personnel mines in there. Uh, along the sides, I would suggest, you know, the left and the right. Uh, sometimes even in the Constantino wire, if you want. Uh, it is an anti-personnel mine. They will get fucked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, bouncing Bettys. If you've ever actually had to, to handle those, you know how dangerous that little three-pronged soup can can be. Um, still in use today, too. Really, really interesting kind of anti-personnel mine. But, uh... Yeah, that was just a little tutorial instruction on strong points, wire obstacles, and uh, you know, just kind of kind of as a bonus fact, I like having an artillery guy. You know, just in case, because when they start, when they get to your obstacle and they start to try and breach it, one of the other things you can do, uh, put that artillery. Artillery. Right in front. Fire off the plot. Yo, they're gonna see it, and then they're gonna either do one of two things: they're either gonna continue to breach and die, or they're gonna run away and die tired after you shoot them in the back. So that that's all. 
as I uh, run through. And uh, just keep in mind, when you're playing Enlisted and you're that sapper, you're setting shit like this up, you run shit, you run the battlefield, and you shape it. Alright? That's it. Uh, I'll be seeing you guys in the next one.